What's happening YouTube? Welcome back to another video and in this video I'll be expanding the storage of my NAS system from the current capacity of 8 terabyte and we'll be expanding it by adding two 16 terabyte hard drives onto the system. So currently in out of the four bays I'm utilizing two bays here. I've got two uh, 8 TB terabytes each. So again recap two 8 terabyte drives in these first and second bays and now I'm going to be adding two additional 16 terabyte drives in bay 3 and bay 4. With that, let's jump straight into it. Now, while my particular Synology NAS model supports hot swap, which means I can add two additional drives without turning the system off, for simplicity of covering the instructions from a perspective of most models out there, I will be turning my Synology off before I add these additional drives. So again, if your particular NAS model supports hot swap, you're welcome to just, you know, um, take these bays out, pop the new hard drives in and continue with your setup. Turning this Synology off is as simple as using the hardware button or navigating into your DSM, clicking on your profile icon on the top right corner, then hitting the shutdown button, press OK. Give the Synology a few quick minutes to properly stop all the services and shut down. Once it's shut down, we'll continue with the installation of the actual hard disk drive. Alright, so uh, the Synology machine has properly turned off, it's completely shut down. It's simply now the matter of taking these trays out. So, number three and number four and installing the drives in it. And as mentioned, today I'll be installing two 16 terabyte hard drives in each of these bays. Um, the installation of the hard drive is pretty straightforward. So there are no screws involved or anything and such. All you have to do is just take the trays out and you pull the side tabs out like so. So one from the left and one from the right. So you pull the tabs out. Then you simply drop the hard drive into the bay like so. Once that's done on the side, just make sure you align these holes here in the actual bay to the screw holes in the hard drive. Once those are aligned, it's simply a matter of putting these side clips back in, like so. And there we go, that's one of the drives all done. So we'll slide this back in. Yep, that's one done. Super easy and simple. Let's do the same for the second drive. Let's pop that in, drop the drive in, align the holes on the side, pop the clips in, right, and the fantastic. Slide it in. There we go, that's it. Once that's done, we're gonna turn on the NAS and wait for it to uh, boot up completely, and then we'll look at the settings on the actual DSM. There we go. So that was the audible sign that the boot up is now completed. So what we're going to do now is we'll log into the DSM and look at the uh, storage manager and see what we need to go and do in there. We're now in DSM. We'll go to the storage manager. So go into apps, storage manager. We'll obviously just let it load. You can already kind of see that they see three and four now have unused hard drives in there. So drive three and drive four, SATA HDD unused. Now what we're gonna do is we'll navigate to the HDD SD section here. Uh, fantastic, we can see 14.6 available capacity outside of the 16 terabytes for uh, both the drives. Before we set it up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on each drive, go to health info, go to um, SMART. What I highly recommend is to do the extended test but because that takes a very long time. I have already done that. Uh, to give you an idea, you can kind of see here that the extended test will take about 1862 minutes. That's about around 30 hours. So it does take a while. I highly recommend you do that. I have done so already. Once you've done the tests, you're ready to roll and set up the drive further. So uh, in terms of my system for storage, you can already see there's a volume here and uh, the error is related to the available space. So out of seven terabytes, I have used 6.2 terabytes, 88% capacity has already been used. 
what I'm going to be doing now is adding the new drive into my current storage pool. So if I go to storage pool right here, click on triple dots on the top, add drive. You can see that I have drive three and four available. Take them, click next. Uh, it says that the products aren't listed on the compatibility list but I have checked online and uh, people have had no issues using these drives. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue setting these up. Now I plan on using the single volume for uh, all my things, but you may want to use different volumes. For example, if I wanted to use one of the drives for just surveillance video, that means a lot of heavy writing use. You may want to like split one of the drives and create a separate volume, therefore keeping the other drive separate from that heavy writing and reading um, uh, tasks. But for my purposes, I will be expanding my current volume uh, to uh, more capacity. So I'll be ticking this box here, hitting next. Uh, and you can kind of see that my storage pool one now, I will be adding these drives to the pool and the estimated capacity is going to be around uh, 29,775 gigabytes. If I click apply, it will give you a warning that, you know, the data on the drive is going to be erased. And because these are brand new drives, there's no data in there. So that's all fine for me. I click OK there. Now you can see on the top here that uh, we have the drives being added. I guess if you wanted to figure out what the actual capacity is going to be for you, the final capacity based on your RAID configuration. Synology has a really good uh, RAID calculator available online that you can use to calculate your final capacity. Uh, link to this calculator I am going to drop in the description of this video. This also helps you understand how much you need to purchase uh, based on what your requirements are. So to give you a bit of an idea, um, if I go to the Synology RAID calculator on the website. If I scroll down, so the way it works is you have these all these bays and you click on the hard drive that you already have and the hard drive you plan on purchasing and that will give you details on what the final configuration looks like. So for example, I have two 8 terabyte drives in my bay 1 and bay 2. So all I'm going to do is click on 8 terabyte here and then click on 8 terabyte again. It tells you that in SHR configuration, which is the Synology Hybrid RAID, you get eight terabyte of available space right here in green, and then eight terabyte is used for protection. And now because I'll be adding two more 16 terabyte hard drive, all I gotta do is just click, go up here, click on 16 terabytes twice, and 13 terabyte available space is the maximum I can get using SHR. You can then compare it with other available RAID options. For example, SHR2, you'll have 16 terabytes of usable space, 16 terabytes of uh, protection, and then 16 terabytes of unused, um, unused space. So obviously, you know, not ideal, but if you were to use SHR2, you will then plan your upgrade accordingly. So you don't have any unused space there. Um, similarly with RAID 0, where is there no redundancy, you've got 48 terabytes complete thing available. You've got RAID 1, uh, where 8 terabyte is available because as you already know, RAID 1 is basically redundancy for the smallest available uh, hard drive space. So if the smallest size here is 8 terabytes, no matter if I add 12 terabytes, 10 or 16 after that, it will cover and copy 8 terabytes onto those initial drives. Uh, then you also have RAID 5, where you have 24 terabytes available, RAID 6, where you have at 16, RAID 10, where you got 16, and RAID F1, where you got 24. So SHR works the best for my scenario, but I highly recommend, you know, if you're setting up a new NAS, that you figure out what the best scenario for you is. Synology also has a link where they explain all the uh, different RAID systems and how they work. Uh, very good resource if you want to learn about all the available uh, RAID setups. I will create another video, as I mentioned, to go through the RAID setups in a bit more detail. So please consider subscribing if you'd like to see that. But what we're gonna do now, we're gonna jump back into the setup just to show you actually how long it takes once you add these drives for the uh, for Synology system to build or update or upgrade or add the space to the storage pool. So as you can see, it, um, it's, it's been a while. I, I started it off at the beginning of the video and it's been about an hour uh, or an hour and a half about there. And it's only done about 1.06% of the whole setup. 
Uh, so it is going to take a while, but the good thing is, while it's building up the or updating the storage pool, you can continue to use your Synology NAS. That's basically it about this video. In my next video, I will be installing a RAM that I figured out, although not officially supported, works really well. So just to give an example, just a bit of a taste of the next video. I've got in my DSM, if we go to resource monitor, if I go to memory, you can kind of see that I've got total terabytes of total memory. I tried a few different modules that were available, including the Synology official one, but the price they want to charge for the 12 gigs, or in this case, the eight gigabytes of RAM, it just wasn't, uh, I just couldn't justify it. So this comes with the four gigabyte storage anyway. I have an additional eight uh, gigabytes of RAM. I'm gonna cover that in my next video, what brand uh, works perfectly and how I basically upgraded that. But also, if you've never upgraded the RAM before, I'll also be uh, demonstrating how you actually install the RAM into the system. So if you're into that, make sure you subscribe to this video. But thank you very much for your time today. Uh, I will leave you with this and I will see you in my next video. Until then, you take care of yourself.